Welcome, my friends, to a chilling expose of a reality most of you face daily, though you may not even realize it. We delve into the murky depths of corporate surveillance, a world where the lines between work and privacy blur into a sinister fog. This is not a tale of science fiction. It is the chilling truth of the modern workplace. Join me as we explore this digital dystopia where your every move, every keystroke, every whispered conversation can be tracked, analyzed and used against you. The concept of monitoring employees is not new. Since the Industrial Revolution, the relentless gears of industry have demanded efficiency, productivity and unwavering control over the workforce. From the moment workers clocked in, their every move was scrutinized, their output measured, their breaks timed. The factory floor became a theater of observation where invisible eyes followed their every move. But the digital age has ushered in a new era of surveillance, one that is far more insidious and all-encompassing. To understand the true nature of corporate surveillance, we must first journey back in time to the late 18th century, to the mind of the English philosopher Jeremy Bentham. Bentham envisioned a prison called the Panopticon, a circular structure where inmates could be observed at all times from a central tower. The genius of the Panopticon lay not in constant observation, but in the of it. The prisoners, never knowing when they were being watched, would internalize the gaze of the guard, policing their own behavior and conforming to the desired norms. This chilling concept, my friends, is known as the panopticon effect, and it has become the defining principle of modern corporate surveillance. Your office, your computer, your phone, they're all part of the digital panopticon. The early days of the digital revolution saw a gradual shift from physical monitoring to digital surveillance. The time clock, that stalwart symbol of industrial control, was joined by more insidious tools. Keystroke loggers, initially designed to measure productivity, began to record every key pressed, every word typed, every website visited. Emails, once considered private correspondence, became fair game for prying eyes. As technology advanced, so too did the tools of corporate surveillance. GPS tracking devices, once reserved for fleet vehicles, found their way into company cars, then laptops, then phones. The line between personal and professional life blurred as employers gained the ability to track their employees' movements, even outside work hours. Today, the digital panopticon has reached unprecedented levels of sophistication. We live in a world of ubiquitous sensors, where our every move, both online and offline, generates a trail of data. Our smartphones, those indispensable extensions of ourselves, have become the ultimate tracking devices. They record our location, our browsing history, our contacts, our conversations, even our sleeping patterns. Social media, once a platform for connection, has morphed into a vast surveillance apparatus. Our likes, our shares, our comments, even our facial expressions in photos are analysed to create detailed profiles of our personalities, our interests, our vulnerabilities. And it's not just our digital footprints that are being monitored. Facial recognition technology, now unnervingly accurate, is being deployed in workplaces, allowing employers to track employees' movements and even their emotional states. trapped in the data web. We are caught, my friends, in a web of data, a web spun from our own digital interactions. And at the center of this web sits the corporate spider, watching, waiting, analyzing. But why, you might ask, is this happening? Why are employers so intent on monitoring their employees' every move? The answer, my friends, is both simple and chilling, control. 
In an age of intense competition and economic uncertainty, employers are seeking to maximize productivity and minimize risk. They believe that by monitoring their employees, they can weed out the unproductive, the disloyal, the potential threats to their bottom line. They justify their actions with arguments of security, efficiency, and even employee safety. But the truth is far more sinister. Corporate surveillance is about power, the power to control, to manipulate, to exploit. Employers set traps disguised as tools to enhance efficiency and well-being. They dangle productivity software, collaboration platforms and wellness apps. We embrace these tools, enticed by their sleek interfaces. We attend webinars, unaware that every task is tracked and analysed. We download wellness apps, oblivious to data being fed into databases. Company-provided devices come with invisible chains. Once we've taken the bait, the trap snaps shut. Monitoring software, silently installed on our devices, records our every keystroke, every website visited, every email sent and received, Keyloggers, those insidious little programs, capture our passwords, our banking details, our most private conversations. And it's not just our digital actions that are being monitored. Webcams, once reserved for video conferencing, are now being hijacked to spy on employees, capturing their every expression, every glance, every private moment. The software even boasts features like sentiment analysis, which claims to gauge our emotions based on our facial expressions and keystrokes. Are we happy, sad, stressed, angry? The corporate machine wants to know. Caught in the net, social media scrutiny and sentiment analysis. Our digital footprints extend far beyond the confines of the workplace. Social media, once a haven for personal expression, has become a hunting ground for corporate surveillance. Employers, using sophisticated software, scrape our profiles for any information that might be deemed relevant to our employment, our political views, our religious beliefs, our sexual orientation, our social circles. They analyze our posts, our likes, our shares, even our friends lists, building detailed profiles of our personalities, our values, our potential risks. A single ill-advised comment, a controversial like, can be enough to derail a career. And then there's sentiment analysis again, this time applied to our social media activity. Are we positive about the company? Do we complain about our jobs? Do we express views that might reflect negatively on the brand? The invisible cage, geo-tracking and RFID badges. The digital panopticon extends beyond the digital realm, seeping into our physical movements as well. GPS tracking devices, once confined to company vehicles, are now finding their way into our smartphones, our laptops, even our ID badges. Employers can track our whereabouts in real time, knowing where we go, who we meet, how long we stay. They justify this intrusion with claims of employee safety, but the truth is far more sinister. They want to know if we're meeting with competitors, if we're visiting union organisers, if we're straying from our designated routes. And let's not forget RFID badges, those seemingly innocuous pieces of plastic that grant us access to our workplaces. These badges can track our every move within the office when we arrive, when we leave, which rooms we enter, how long we spend at our desks. We become prisoners in a gilded cage, our movements monitored, our freedom curtailed. Data as a weapon, performance reviews and disciplinary action. The data gathered through these insidious means is not simply collected and stored, it's weaponized. 
It's used to inform performance reviews, to justify promotions or demotions, to make hiring and firing decisions. Imagine, my friends, being called into your manager's office only to be confronted with a dossier of your digital activity. We've noticed a dip in your keystrokes over the past month, your manager says, his voice a blend of disappointment and accusation. Or perhaps you're passed over for a promotion, told that your lack of engagement on the company's social media platform raised concerns about your commitment. The data, stripped of context, becomes a tool of oppression used to silence dissent, to stifle creativity, to enforce conformity. The modern corporation, my friends, is obsessed with efficiency. Every minute, every keystroke, every interaction is scrutinized for its contribution to the bottom line. And so, the corporate mousetrap is presented as a tool of optimization, a way to eliminate waste, to streamline processes, to squeeze every last drop of productivity from the workforce. It's not about spying, they claim, their voices dripping with honeyed deceit, it's about identifying bottlenecks, improving communication, creating a more productive work environment. But behind these platitudes lies a cold, calculating logic, the logic of the machine, where human beings are reduced to mere cogs, their value measured solely in terms of their output. The global economy, like a ship caught in a storm, is buffeted by winds of change. Recessions loom, industries crumble, and competition grows ever fiercer. In this climate of fear and uncertainty, corporations cling to the illusion of control, seeking any advantage they can find. And so they turn to surveillance, believing that by monitoring their employees, they can mitigate risk, root out dissent, and maintain their grip on power. We need to be proactive, they whisper, their voices laced with paranoia. We need to know what our employees are thinking, what they're planning before it's too late. The corporate mousetrap in their minds becomes a shield against the chaos, a way to impose order on an increasingly unpredictable world. The digital age has unleashed the genie from the bottle, freeing us from the confines of the traditional office. We can now work from anywhere, at any time, connected to our employers through the invisible threads of the internet. But this newfound freedom comes at a price, the erosion of the boundary between work and personal life. With employees no longer tethered to a physical office, employers feel the need to extend their gaze to monitor their every move, even in the supposed sanctity of their own homes. We need to ensure that our employees are actually working, they proclaim, their voice is a blend of concern and suspicion. We need to maintain productivity, even in a remote environment. And so the corporate mousetrap becomes a virtual leash, extending its reach into our homes, our bedrooms, our private lives. The always-on culture of the modern workplace has blurred the lines between our professional and personal lives. We're expected to be reachable at all hours, to respond to emails on weekends, to take work calls on vacation. This constant connectivity, while touted as a perk of the digital age, has eroded the boundaries that once provided us with respite from the demands of work. And with the rise of corporate surveillance, our employers have gained unprecedented access to our private lives. They see our late night browsing history, our weekend social media activity, our private messages with friends and family. The distinction between the employee and the private individual becomes increasingly meaningless. We are, in essence, always at work, our lives transformed into an endless performance review. The legal landscape of employee privacy is a minefield fraught with inconsistencies and loopholes. 
Laws vary widely from country to country, and even within the same jurisdiction, the rules can be complex and difficult to navigate. In some cases, employers are required to obtain consent before monitoring their employees, but the definition of consent is often vague and open to interpretation. And even when laws exist to protect employee privacy, they are often difficult to enforce, particularly in the digital realm, where surveillance can be conducted remotely and with relative anonymity. The result is a system where employers often operate in a legal grey area, pushing the boundaries of what is permissible, knowing that the odds of facing serious consequences are slim. Perhaps the most insidious aspect of corporate surveillance is its normalisation. We are bombarded with messages, both subtle and overt, that tell us to accept surveillance as a necessary evil, a small price to pay for security, efficiency and even our own safety. We are told that if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear, a seductive but dangerous argument that ignores the fundamental right to privacy. And so we become complicit in our own surveillance, accepting the erosion of our privacy as an inevitable consequence of the digital age. We fail to challenge the encroachment of corporate power into our lives, lulled into a state of apathy and resignation. From consumer to product, the commodification of data. In the digital age, data is the new oil a valuable commodity that is extracted, refined and sold for profit. And we, my friends, are the oil wells. Our every click, every like, every purchase generates a stream of data that is collected, analysed and monetized by corporations. Our personal information is packaged and sold to advertisers who use it to target us with personalised ads, manipulating our desires, shaping our consumption habits. We are no longer merely consumers. We are the products ourselves, our data points traded on a vast digital marketplace. And the corporate mousetrap, with its insatiable appetite for data, is the perfect tool for this new era of surveillance capitalism. A world without walls, the global reach of corporate surveillance, the digital panopticon knows no borders. Corporations with their global reach and vast resources are able to track and monitor employees across continents, regardless of local laws or cultural norms. Data flows freely across borders, collected in one country, processed in another, and stored in yet another, making it difficult for individuals to understand how their information is being used or to seek redress when their privacy is violated. The corporate mousetrap, once confined to the walls of the office, has become a global phenomenon, ensnaring workers in a web of surveillance that spans the planet. We are all, in a sense, citizens of the digital panopticon. Our lives subject to the whims of corporations that operate with little accountability and even less regard for our fundamental rights. Reclaiming your digital shadow. Strategies for evasion. We've witnessed the insidious reach of the corporate mousetrap, how it ensnares us in a web of surveillance. But fear not, my friends, for there are ways to resist, to reclaim your privacy. It's time to outsmart the corporate spider and reclaim your digital shadow. Think of it as a game of cat and mouse, a battle of wits. Every click, every post, every online interaction leaves a trace. Learn to tread lightly, to minimise your footprint, to become a ghost in the machine. The art of anonymity, masking your online presence. In the digital world, anonymity is your shield, your cloak of invisibility. It's about making yourself a smaller target, blending into the background noise of the internet, making it harder for the corporate eye to track your movements. 
Embrace the power of pseudonyms, those digital aliases that allow you to navigate the online world with a degree of detachment. Use different email addresses for different purposes, one for work, one for personal use, one for online shopping. Consider using a virtual private network or VPN which encrypts your internet traffic and masks your IP address, making it appear as though you're browsing from a different location. It's like donning a digital disguise, making it harder for websites and trackers to identify you. And when it comes to social media, be mindful of what you share and with whom. Adjust your privacy settings to limit the visibility of your posts and think twice before connecting with colleagues or employers on personal accounts. Encrypting your world, shielding your data from prying eyes. Encryption is the digital equivalent of a locked vault protecting your data from unauthorized access. It's about scrambling your information, turning it into an unreadable jumble for anyone without the key. Start by encrypting your devices, your laptop, your smartphone, your tablet. Most operating systems come with built-in encryption tools or you can download third-party software. It's like putting a digital lock on your front door, making it much harder for intruders to gain access. Use encrypted messaging apps for sensitive communications, ensuring that your conversations remain private. These apps use end-to-end -end encryption, meaning that only the sender and recipient can read the messages. Even the app developers themselves can't decipher the content. And when it comes to passwords, think strong and unique. A strong password is like a complex lock, making it nearly impossible for brute force attacks to crack. Use a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers and symbols, and avoid using the same password for multiple accounts. The power of awareness. Understanding your employer's policies. Knowledge, my friends, is power. Arm yourself with an understanding of your employer's surveillance policies. These policies, often buried deep within employee handbooks or company intranets, outline the rules of the game, defining what your employer can and cannot monitor. Read these policies carefully, paying close attention to the language used. What devices are subject to monitoring? What types of data are being collected? Are there any limits on how this data can be used? If the language is vague or overly broad, don't hesitate to ask for clarification. Remember, you have a right to understand how your employer is monitoring your activities and to push back against policies you deem unfair or invasive. Document any instances where you believe your privacy has been violated, keeping a record of dates, times and specific examples. This documentation can be invaluable if you ever need to file a complaint or seek legal recourse. Setting boundaries, defining your right to disconnect. In an age of always-on connectivity, it's essential to establish boundaries between your work life and your personal life. You have a right to disconnect, to reclaim your time and your mental space outside of work hours. Set clear expectations with your employer about your availability. Let them know that you won't be responding to emails or taking work calls after a certain hour or on weekends. Disable work-related notifications on your personal devices, creating a digital sanctuary where you can relax and recharge without the intrusion of work-related messages. Remember, your time is your own, a precious commodity that should be guarded jealously. Don't let your employer dictate the terms of your existence, encroaching on your personal time and eroding your right to disconnect. The collective pushback, unions and employee advocacy groups. There is strength in numbers, my friends. Unions and employee advocacy groups are powerful allies in the fight against invasive surveillance. 
These organizations can advocate for stronger privacy protections, negotiate better terms in collective bargaining agreements, and provide legal support to workers whose rights have been violated. Join a union if you have the opportunity. Unions have a long history of fighting for worker rights, and they are increasingly taking on the issue of workplace surveillance. Support employee advocacy groups that are working to raise awareness about the dangers of surveillance and to push for legislative change. These groups play a vital role in holding corporations accountable and in shaping public opinion. Remember, you're not alone in this fight. By joining forces with other workers, you can amplify your voice, challenge corporate power, and create a more just and equitable workplace for all. Legislation for a digital age, advocating for stronger privacy laws, the laws governing workplace surveillance are often outdated and inadequate, failing to keep pace with the rapid advances in technology. We need stronger privacy laws that protect workers from the excesses of corporate surveillance. Contact your elected officials, urging them to support legislation that safeguards employee privacy. Demand laws that require employers to obtain explicit consent before monitoring employees, that limit the types of data that can be collected, and that provide workers with meaningful redress when their privacy is violated. Support organisations that are fighting for digital rights, groups that are pushing for comprehensive privacy legislation that protects all of us, not just those in the workplace, Remember, laws are not static. They evolve over time, reflecting the values and priorities of society. By raising our voices, by demanding better, we can shape the legal landscape, creating a digital world where privacy is respected, not exploited. Towards an ethical framework for workplace monitoring, the goal is to use workplace monitoring responsibly, ethically, and with respect for employee privacy. Move beyond crude tools to balance employer needs with worker rights. Recognize employees as human beings with lives beyond work. Commit to transparency, open communication, and trust. Prioritize well-being, autonomy, and privacy in monitoring. The future of work is being written now. Ensure technology empowers not enslaves. A double-edged sword, the dichotomy of surveillance. Ah, the corporate mousetrap, a tool that embodies a stark dichotomy, a double-edged sword that cuts both ways. On the one hand, surveillance in the workplace, much like a watchful guardian, can offer a sense of security a shield against theft, misconduct, and the ever-present threat of the inefficient. It holds the promise of a well-ordered world where productivity reigns supreme and accountability is the watchword of the day. Yet, like all things forged in the fires of good intentions, surveillance casts a long and often unsettling shadow. For every instance where it safeguards, it also has the potential to stifle, to erode trust and to transform the workplace into a breeding ground for paranoia. It's a delicate balancing act, this dance between security and freedom, between efficiency and autonomy. And as we delve deeper into the pros and cons of the corporate mousetrap, we must tread carefully lest we become entangled in its intricate web of contradictions. The Siren Song of Security Protection or Paranoia In a world riddled with uncertainty, the Siren Song of Security holds an undeniable allure. Employers, like vigilant sentinels, are drawn to the promise of protection, of safeguarding their assets, their data, their very livelihoods. And who can blame them? The corporate world is not without its share of rogues and scoundrels, those who would seek to exploit, to steal, to disrupt the delicate balance of commerce. Surveillance in its various forms offers a means of deterrence, 
a way to keep the wolves at bay. It's a comfort, some might say, to know that someone or something is watching, ensuring that all is right and proper within the walls of the workplace. But this comfort, my friends, can come at a steep price. For when surveillance becomes all-encompassing, when the watchful eye never sleeps, it can breed a culture of paranoia, where suspicion and distrust become the norm. Efficiencies embrace. Productivity gains at what cost? The modern corporation, with its insatiable appetite for growth and profit, is perpetually seeking the holy grail of efficiency. Every minute, every keystroke, every interaction is scrutinized for its contribution to the bottom line. And here, the corporate mousetrap, with its promise of quantifiable data and measurable outcomes, finds a receptive audience. Employers armed with metrics and analytics can track employee productivity with unprecedented precision, identifying bottlenecks, streamlining workflows and optimizing performance. It's a seductive proposition, the idea that we can fine-tune the workplace like a well-oiled machine, squeezing every last drop of productivity from our human capital. But this relentless pursuit of efficiency, my friends, can come at a human cost. For when the workplace becomes a pressure cooker of performance metrics where every action is measured and analysed, it can stifle creativity, innovation and the very essence of human ingenuity. The chilling effect on innovation. Human beings are not mere cogs in a machine. We thrive on autonomy on the freedom to think and explore. True innovation is born in unstructured creativity. The corporate gaze can cast a chilling effect on this impulse. Constant monitoring stifles risk-taking and creativity. Fear of mistakes leads to conformity. Innovation requires freedom to fail and explore. The trust deficit. Sowing seeds of suspicion and mistrust. Trust, that elusive yet essential ingredient in any successful relationship, is the bedrock of a healthy workplace. When employers and employees trust one another, when there's a shared sense of respect and understanding, the workplace can become a place of collaboration, innovation and mutual benefit. But the corporate mousetrap, with its implicit message of suspicion and distrust, can erode this foundation, sowing seeds of doubt and resentment that can poison the workplace atmosphere. When employees feel as though they're constantly being watched, their every action scrutinized for signs of misconduct, it's only natural for them to feel undervalued, unappreciated, and ultimately distrustful of their employers. This lack of trust can manifest in numerous ways – decreased morale, reduced productivity, increased absenteeism and a general sense of apathy and disengagement. A workplace devoid of trust, my friends, is like a garden deprived of sunlight. It may struggle to survive, but it will never truly flourish. The legal quagmire, navigating the labyrinth of regulations. The legal landscape surrounding workplace surveillance is, to put it mildly, a tangled web of regulations, statutes and precedents that can leave even the most seasoned legal minds scratching their heads. Laws vary widely from country to country, and even within the same jurisdiction, the rules governing employee monitoring can be complex, contradictory, and open to interpretation. Employers must navigate this legal quagmire carefully, ensuring that their surveillance practices comply with all applicable laws and regulations. Failure to do so can result in hefty fines, lawsuits, and irreparable damage to their reputation. Employees too must be aware of their rights and responsibilities under the law. 
They need to understand what types of monitoring are permissible, what data their employers are allowed to collect, and how this data can be used. It's a complex and constantly evolving landscape, my friends, one that requires vigilance, awareness, and a healthy dose of caution from both employers and employees alike. The ethical imperative, balancing security with human dignity. Beyond the letter of the law, my friends, lies a higher calling, the ethical imperative to treat our fellow human beings with dignity and respect. The corporate mousetrap, for all its practical applications, poses a fundamental ethical dilemma. How do we balance the legitimate needs for security and efficiency with the inherent right to privacy and autonomy? It's a question that has plagued philosophers and ethicists for centuries, and one that takes on new urgency in our increasingly digital age. There are no easy answers, my friends, no one-size-fits-all solutions, but there are principles we can strive to uphold transparency, proportionality and accountability. Employers have a responsibility to be transparent with their employees about their surveillance practices to collect only the data that is absolutely necessary and to use this data responsibly and ethically. A call for transparency towards a more open and accountable workplace. Transparency is the antidote to the excesses of the corporate mousetrap. Open dialogue about surveillance fosters trust and mutual respect Transparency is the sunlight that disinfects the shadows of suspicion. It's the foundation for a more ethical and productive workplace. Let us strive for a future where technology empowers, not enslaves, where human dignity is always paramount. The Corporate Labyrinth. We've journeyed together, my friends, through the shadowy corridors of the corporate world, exposing the hidden mechanisms of surveillance, the intricate workings of the corporate mousetrap. We've seen how technology, once hailed as a tool of liberation, can be twisted to serve the interests of control and exploitation. We've seen how the allure of efficiency, the siren song of security, can blind us to the erosion of privacy, the stifling of creativity, the slow poison of distrust that seeps into the workplace when surveillance becomes all-encompassing. But let us not despair, my friends, for within each of us lies the power to resist, to reclaim our autonomy, to navigate this corporate labyrinth with wisdom and courage. Remember the strategies we discussed, the art of anonymity, the power of encryption, the importance of understanding your rights, the need to set boundaries, the strength in collective action, the call for stronger privacy laws, the ethical imperative to treat one another with dignity and respect. Unmasking the illusion, your career, your terms. The corporate world, for all its talk of empowerment and innovation, often seeks to confine us within narrow roles, to define our worth solely by our productivity, our output, our adherence to the corporate script. But you, my friends, are more than just employees, more than just data points, more than just cogs in a machine. You are individuals, each with your own unique talents, aspirations and values. Don't let the corporate mouse trap define your career, your future, your sense of self. Embrace the power of choice, the freedom to shape your own path, to pursue work that aligns with your values, that ignites your passions, that allows you to make a meaningful contribution to the world. Remember, the corporate world needs your talent, your creativity, your ingenuity. But you don't have to sacrifice your privacy, your autonomy, your very humanity to succeed in this environment. Break free from the trap. As we conclude our journey, my friends, I leave you with a call to action. 
Don't be passive observers in this digital age, swept along by the currents of technological change. Be active participants, informed citizens, vocal advocates for your rights, your values, your vision of a better future. Challenge the status quo, question the assumptions, push back against the encroachment of surveillance into every aspect of our lives. Remember, the future is not preordained, it is ours to create. Book a complimentary career breakthrough call with us today and let us help you break free from the corporate mousetrap. Build a career that truly reflects your unique talents and aspirations.